This is the Annex, a sociology podcast. I'm Joseph Cohen from Queens College in the City University of New York. For more, visit theannexpodcast.com. So last week, a lot of my conservative American friends were asking me about this guy, Jordan Peterson. Uh, He's a psychology professor at the University of Toronto, and he blew up on uh, conservative media this week. And his thing is he's sort of like an anti-PC culture guy. Canadians will know him well because he uh, fought the good fight against gender-neutral pronouns. (laughs) And, uh, you know, he's like, that's the type of guy he is. But he was on BBC arguing gender issues with a female journalist and people were super jazzed up about him. And I got like, you know, there was, you could, you could see the uh, Buzzfeed headlines about how he destroys PC culture with research and reason. And I got into a little exchange, uh, on uh, Nick Wolfinger's uh, Twitter feed. Who, uh, given the context, he'd, he'd probably want to disclaim that uh, he's kind of center left. Yeah, totally. No, he wasn't like arguing. He was yeah. like, what's up with this yeah. guy? And he was more uh, upset about the insinuation that uh, sociology was filled with postmodernism. <laughs> That was, that was his angle. No, the, the, the specific term, right? Because this is very much like I said, like uh, people outside sociology probably think we talk about cultural appropriation where we don't. Uh, Peterson uh, was saying, like, we talk about um, uh, uh, postmodernism, whereas I, I, I can't remember the last time I saw the word postmodernism in a sociology article. Yeah. Yeah. In an article. In departments, I bet it's there. We were having that discussion, but that's for another day. Yeah. Whether or not, like, uh, you know, ver- elite versus pop culture within the discipline, in our professional culture. Mm-hmm. But in any case, People were all jazzed up about him. And I got uh, friends who are non-sociologists, but very smart people saying, what do you think of this guy? Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, I, first of all, have you guys heard heard of this guy or seen this BBC video? I've heard of him and I read a uh, an article about the video where I, I thought the article. So the article I read was by uh, Connor Friedersdorf at The Atlantic, mm-hmm. who's an acquaintance of mine. And uh you know, his article was basically saying, look, I have no opinion on Peterson. I'm not going to form an opinion. It's not worth my time. But in this particular case, um, the journalist was calling him divisive and antagonistic or whatever, mm-hmm. but he was being very conciliatory and moderate. And, and uh, she kept not, she kept uh, tendentiously mischaracterizing his positions. Yeah. So he would say something like, um, well, you know, men and women, uh, sometimes want different things. And I, I hope everybody's able to pursue what she wants, what they want, uh, men and women both. And then she's like, so you're saying women should be allowed to get jobs. <laughs> and he's like, no, that's not what I said. You know? So apparently that was the entire interview. I haven't watched it, but I read that article on it that described it that way. I wa- I watched the interview. Yeah. All right. And I think this is a thing of people. So I, my take on this guy is he he takes red meat issues mm-hmm. and advances them with an air of scientism and uh, mm-hmm. uh, civility politics. And I think people are enthralled by the form rather than the substance. Like as far as is this guy uh, talking like a great scientist? Like I haven't I haven't read his work. I can only judge what I saw in the video. I found him to be like quite normative. Mm-hmm. And he did weird things like he attributes motives or there's straw man argument. Mm-hmm. Uh, arguments and his his discussions are like light on empirics except for like a claim that gender is a non-factor in earnings differences which contradicts like what i've seen and you know he had these weird arguments like he would say that multivariate analyses unquote show that gender is not the only factor uh, contributing to pay differences and then he proceeds to speak as if that statement says that gender is not a factor <laughs> well you my, know my what position I mean? on this sort of thing I, I know we're talking about him but like on the merits my position with this sort of thing is is always like you have to distinguish between what's a mechanism and what's a mm-hmm. control and it gets very tricky yeah. very fast to and basically you know if you like the finding then that's a mechanism. And if you don't like the finding, then that's a control. You know, there, there's Whatever, a, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a researcher degree of freedom. But I understand. It's I, like he wants to say that there's equality. And so if we have this um, this raw fact of inequality, then you call the things controls rather than mechanisms, you know. 
Well, they're all specified the same way in most multivariate well, models. Thing. That's so exactly it's... the thing. R and state, I have no idea whether you're talking about a control or a mechanism. It's just how uh, it's how you interpret it theoretically. Well, I, I don't know. I've looked at this data. I'll tell you gender or sex rather registers as significant. And like, that's it. And if you want to say that it doesn't matter, then the onus is on you to say why you believe something that contradicts empirical yeah. findings, mm-hmm. right? So this guy, like, he didn't strike me as an awesome scientist, but I think... He's clinical, uh, isn't he? Yeah, I don't even know. I'm not going to read this stuff. But like, I mean, it's... I, I mean, listen, I, I, I judged... I Like, yes, I'm being judgmental. Well, one is I'm not interested in this topic. Sure. And I listened to him speak and I didn't see like this awesome scientific mind. So I'm not interested, but he, and my impression is, is that people love somebody who seems to capably argue anti PC positions. Like it's, he's going (laughs) against PC culture and doing it with an air of respectability. But there was a very interesting piece that was written about him. I think by David Brooks or, or uh, Ross Douthat. I'm not sure which one. Uh, it would but, have been Brooks because I read everything Douthat, right? So I didn't see that. Okay. So, and Brooks said, you know, one thing that he is doing is he is speaking to young men, a group that maybe, uh, you know, intellectuals are abandoning in some way, you know, like uh, that uh, uh, young men, there's plenty of people demonizing young men. And uh, maybe what he's doing is he's offering a positive, not positive as in good, but positive as in giving prescriptive information that maybe they could use. He's speaking to young men and maybe we're failing. And it got me thinking, like, are we failing young men on some level, like uh, in this particular moment, you know, uh, not in terms of are we doing them misjustice, but are we not, guiding them or speaking to them or is a lot of discourse spending time speaking about them in their presence but not giving them uh, you know i I don't know i'll I'll say that we're failing all sorts of people in all sorts of ways yeah so i mean so i have two so i have two responses to that so number one um you know i know that i might get you know, sort of my card to the sisterhood taken away for this, but I have (laughs) often felt really bad for boys and men. (laughs) Right. Um, No, seriously, my entire life. Like, I I, I mean, that's not to say that I, I don't think that, that girls and women get the, don't get the short end of the stick. They do. Right. But I, but I actually also think that like the sort of um, the sort of like, sex and gender-based inequality that we have in this country and the ways in which we socialize um, our children as a result and their expectations that we have of them and how they grow to be adults. Um, I, I think, you know, I think that we actually at this point in time um, have have become a lot more sympathetic and empathetic to um to how that negatively impacts girls and women. Um, but we haven't gotten to a place where we think about how that negatively impacts boys and men. Um, like, what are you thinking about, like, concretely, like, things that would be, like, cultural oh, yeah. views so, like, or discussions? Okay, or... just last night, right? Just last night, I was, I was in my mm-hmm. house, right? And my house is a mess, right? And, you know, I'm the primary breadwinner in my house. Right. You know, which Mm -hmm. goes against these gendered norms. Right. And, you know, and I came into the house and I was like, what the hell? Why couldn't he even just clean up? Right. And I was like, oh, my God, I sound like just like one of those men. Right. (laughs) Like a 1970s (laughs) sitcom. Right. And I was like, oh, this is, you know, I was like, this is why men, you know, back in the day would like come home from a hard day of work and then just go and close the door to the, to the den and maybe they would say a word to the kids before they went to bed. Right. Uh, I was like, do you have a chair? <laughs> like there's your no, chair. That no, no else is no. See, that's where I can't go all the way in with, with guys. Yeah. Right. Cause I don't have the chair and I'm in charge yeah. of wake up and bedtime and baths and yeah. cleaning the house and wow. everything else. Right. So that, so yeah. So I, I feel some, I feel bad for guy for, for boys and men. Um, but I don't get carried away with that. Um, but I mean, but yeah, no, I, I think that um, 
I, I think that Gabriel is right is we have failed and continue to fail many people, <laughs> many groups of people. And, um, mm -hmm. and I think that when people talk about uh, society failing young men, especially young white men at this point in time, um, I think it's like this weird thing where I'm just like, you've been failing them since forever. <laughs> right. By enforcing mm -hmm. these like standards of masculinity that are just like the, this like fake standards. <laughs> right. Or, or I wouldn't even say fake masculinity. I'd say like wrong standards of masculinity. Like, yes. You know, this whole like pornification of culture is uh, kind of a, But, you know, I, I think one of the reasons people get upset about this kind of thing is because they think when you say society fails group X, it, it, they kind of read into that. Um, oh, so you're saying it fails group X more than it fails group Y. <laughs> and, and right, that's right. not necessarily true, right? It can entirely be the case that society, uh, you know, does bad things or fails to promote, say, young white guys, even if it's also the case that it does worse things to, you know, old black women. Yeah, society whatever, sucks. Right? Let's I mean, all it, just start a commune. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Well, I was thinking more of bringing back the half <laughs> but we can agree that society is <laughs> Right, so there's that. But then the other thing, thinking about this guy, Jordan Peterson, you know, also mm -hmm. made me think about J.P. Rushton, right? Who's no longer, he's uh -huh. no longer around, he's right? right? Also, a psych also a psychologist, also, um, well, he's, he's, he died in 2012, but also a, pro a, a professor in Canada, Right. And also uh, also a problematic scholar who also had like a very uh, a pretty big following. Right. Among J.P. Rushton's more controversial work um, is basically and I remember because my when my first week at at Princeton as a graduate student, there was a little book. In my in my mailbox, which yeah, I have, I, I got it too. Every what, yeah, that every green book, got that it. little green, the green book, <laughs> the green book. Oh, I didn't, I didn't remember. It color. was green. <laughs> I, it was green, and I remember opening this thing, and I was like, "Oh my god, what is Wait, this?" Wait, you kept right? it? You kept it? Yeah, I still have it to remind me that people believe this shit, oh my god. and that and that this uh -huh. man actually has been published in some of some of the top journals in his field in psychology as well as evolutionary biology. And one of his more controversial, but also widely cited um, areas of work is in his stuff where he, he basically, it's almost like say, he does this research that basically says, okay, the world is divided up by races, right? And East Asians have the highest average IQs, but they also have like the smallest genitalia, yeah, exactly. right? Oh, he talks about dicks. I knew he was a racist. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's about, coming like, back to yeah. me, that, that green right? book. Right, and then, and then blacks, right, have the smallest IQs and the largest genitalia. And he has, and, and white and white men, they're like the Goldilocks, right? They're, they're, right? And it's, right, which is really convenient, right? Um, but it's sort of like an IQ is associated with brain size. And so the reason why, so when you have larger genitalia, that takes up a lot of energy and a lot of blood. And so that makes it impossible for your brain to grow to its fullest, right? And this is, I mean, it's crazy. It's uh. crazy stuff, but people love it. People ate it up. Like as, as you know, as recently as I remember. That doesn't even make sense just as biology, uh, yeah. right? Cause it's like uh -huh. you're, yeah. um, most of the most of the growth in your your brain is basically the size it's going to be before yeah, you get to puberty. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It is yeah. crazy, Gabriel. And uh, but people yeah. love it. Like I remember in two thousand eight, Slate's science editor was like, "You know what, people? I didn't want to think that like IQ uh, was associated with race, but this like extremely smart." Uh, guy jp rushton um has shown that it is and so yeah so that's why black people don't do well in school and it was crazy it caused a shitstorm. the science editor of slate right so 
I'm I'm saying I think that I don't know what's going on in Ontario. Uh, um, uh, there's uh, <laughs> right. uh, still waters run deep up there, eh? <laughs> I guess so. Well, I guess so. I, I don't know what's going on. We got our crazies like everybody else. And who the heck paid for that book? Like to send a, a hardback oh. copy to every. Oh yeah. So he, so it was, I'm, I can't remember. I, I think it was the pioneer fund, oh, which has been listed as a white supremacist group. Uh, um, I think he was there. He was on their board or whatever. And, and yeah, they paid for that and they sent it out to academics. They didn't even know that I was just a stupid, like first semester grad student. They just, they just gave me a copy anyway, but they just decided to, to plaster um, like sociology and psychology departments around the country with this, with this book. Uh, You know what though? It goes to show that uh, a faculty position does give you like an air of authority. And there are people who will see if you're able to mimic the form of respectable scientific debate, you can enter the public sphere and say wackadoo and very harmful things because most people can't tell the difference. Right. They saw yeah. they saw this guy to me, in my mind, they saw this guy, Peterson. They saw his calm demeanor and he used the word multivariate analysis. You know, <laughs> and like, it, it had all of the form, but they don't have the training to or maybe the detailed knowledge to see that this guy was form and no substance. And that's my take on him. Yeah, but I, I, just to clarify, my understanding is that um, Peterson isn't saying anything as um, you know, far from mainstream political consensus as uh, yeah. Russian. Yeah. Right. He, he's, I mean, Peterson is basically expressing totally mundane. Well, I said, I think he's arguing for masculinity and women won't like you unless you're powerful. And, uh, I don't know. You see the video if you can stomach it, but like, it's pretty much. I just told you, I spend a quarter <laughs> yeah. of my week peer reviewing stuff. <laughs> I mean, I, I already spend more time reading slash watching stuff I'm not interested in that, you know. You've been listening to the Annex, a sociology podcast. For more information, visit theannexpodcast.com. Music is by Lena Orsa. Our production team included Anika Chowdhury, and Liseth Moreno. On behalf of the Annex team, I'm Joe Cohen. Thanks for listening.